We are in this thing deep, thousands of dollars. Is it even worth it on this one? Let's get started. This is a 2008 Infiniti QX56, and for those of you who have been following along for many, many, many months or years on the Car Wizard channel, you will know that I did have one just this color quite some time ago. And I know from experience when I bought it, it took me literally six months to work through all of the bugs. There was, these things are known for electrical problems and seals leaking and it took, it, I pulled my hair out going, every time I got something fixed, the next thing would break and the next thing and the next thing. And I finally got it sorted and I said, I'm, I'm done. They are awesome though. When the, everything's up to snuff, they ride amazing. And I do like the styling on the front. I really like these. And the towing capacity on these is very, very high for an SUV. I towed quite a large boat down to Grand Lake in Oklahoma. I think it was 8,000 pounds. These things are rated for almost 10,000 pounds, 90 something hundred or something. And it pulled it just fine. Very powerful engine. I've got a list of things, literally a whole list of things that we found wrong. We've got the go ahead on everything. The customer even put some money down payment and said, go for it. Let's go ahead and take a look around this thing. This front end is one of those like certain cat breeds or certain dog breeds. You either love it or you hate it. There is no gray area. No one says, I kind of like these. They say, I love these or I absolutely hate these. I am of the crowd that I like these. To me, the front end is very artsy, very cool, the styling and everything. I really, really like the front end on these QX56s. These do have nice wheels. We have all the center caps here off. We're doing some services and checking some things out during the inspection. It has nice wheels and it has really nice tires. And unfortunately, the two front tires have kind of flat spots or defects in them that will have to be taken in for warranty. As we look down this side, it's not dented or caved in. It's in pretty good shape, pretty nice. These do have air suspension in the back, which this one has been converted to coils. That is the common thing because as you see as we go along, they really don't make a lot of parts for this vehicle anymore. They've actually stopped making a lot of parts on these vehicles. As we go around to the back, you can see, yes, it is from Texas. And it's very similar to an Armada, which is the same chassis, kind of the same styling, but this is just the Infinity model. It is also in decent shape back here. And I like the tail lights as well. They look really nice on these. Let's go ahead and hop under the hood. Here we are with our Nissan or Infiniti 5.6 V8. And they are very powerful. And they also are very, very thirsty on gas. On the highway, you can expect 10 or 11 miles per gallon, maybe 12, maybe a little more, but not much more. Around town, literally eight. You can see we have the valve covers off. Magic Mike is actually working on this one. And although it's considerably clean in here for 150,000 miles roughly, you guys are gonna be shocked what I show you here in a little bit. This one had engine oil leaking all down the block and it was the valve covers and also these cam actuator plates here. They're just RTV silicone from the factory. so. Those are already going back together with fresh silicone on them. The valve cover on that side is also already back together. But let's take a look one more time at the valve cover off side. You can see that it's kind of a brown color. And it's to be expected. I mean, it, it doesn't look abnormal. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's bad. But let's go take a look at that Sequoia you guys just saw a video on. So you guys just saw this 2002 Sequoia on a video actually not too long ago. It's from New York State. It has almost 400,000 miles on it, more than double what the QX56 has. And let's take a look. We are doing the valve cover gaskets and Daniel's son took the valve cover off and he was shocked. He was like, this is amazing. This is a testament to Toyota quality. Let's take a look. Look at that, guys. It looks like it has 40,000 miles on it. It's spotless in there. It's still silver, shiny aluminum. 
I haven't seen any engine with this many miles be that clean on the inside. Absolutely beautiful. This engine has tons of life left in it, even with this many miles on it. So a lot of things can influence the cleanliness inside the engine. The frequency of oil changes, the quality of the oil. A lot of things can change the future of an engine just based on if you skip oil changes or you use really cheap oil. This has not been ill-maintained on the QX56. What I see under the valve cover is not good or bad, it's normal. But I just wanted to show you guys that engine, obviously it's been well maintained, but even with that many miles on it, it is so clean inside the engine. I was shocked. I looked at Daniel's son and I was like, I'm done. I'm just buying Toyotas from now on. This is so cool. This is amazing. So that means I get the Ferrari. Yes, you can have the Ferrari. I want to get a, a Lexus LFA. You guys heard it. It's recorded. Millions of dollars for an LFA. Oh, well, maybe not. Oh, no, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> okay. No, I don't want one of those. It's too expensive. I wouldn't want to pay the insurance on it. So we got a long list. Let me actually grab the list on this thing while I close the hood. And then after we get the list done, we'll jump in the interior. So a lot of things I'm going to list here are exactly the same exact things that were wrong with my QX56 and probably the same exact things that are wrong with your QX56. These are very, very common issues. Inside the dash, there's actuator motors for the HVAC that go floor, defrost, and even temperature, cold, hot. When you turn on the key, this one goes click, 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 click. The, the gears are stripped. And also another one of them, the uh, actuators aren't even moving. And actually, I'll open up the hood one more time. I want to show you guys another thing. It has no heat. You can turn it all the way to hot, and sometimes you'll get a little heat. But most of the time, there is no heat. If you have an Armada or one of these QX56, this is very, very common. Let me show you real quick. That little box right there is the heater valve, and they fail. And then you turn it up to full hot to have some heat on a cold day, and that valve says, hell no, bro. I'm not working. I'm dead. On these vehicles, it's very easy to say, oh my goodness, the heater core's plugged, or there's an actuator in the dash that's bad, and it's none of those. It's right there on the firewall. Sometimes the clicking you can hear, click, 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 when you turn it on, actually can be that actuator doing the clicking. So keep that in mind on these QX56s. The steering rack is leaking. These are things that Magic Mike has written down as he did his inspection. The steering rack is leaking out of the seals really bad. And the racks aren't so expensive on these that we can just go ahead and replace the rack for what it would cost to rebuild it. So it's getting a new steering rack. The front differential input or the pinion seal is leaking. The left rear wheel bearing has play in it. That means the new hub. Valve covers are leaking. The camshaft actuator plates that I showed you are leaking. Transfer case service. The valve we just talked about here in the, uh, the engine bay. Neither of all the power windows work, and it's a common issue on these as well. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. Not added to this list is a common issue on these the fuel gauge quits working and the actual cluster is bad. I had to do that on my QX56 and it's very common on these. You have to replace the cluster with a complete other cluster. The cluster actually sends the power to the fuel sender on these and it dies and there is no other fix. But we also have a few other services we're going to do to this vehicle. And these things are adding up fast, 500 here, 300 there, 1500 there. The rack's going to be quite a bit. We got the alignment, the rack, the labor. Also, he needs some tires. The tires have some issues. That may be something he can warranty with wherever he bought them since they're fairly recent purchases. One of the flaps actuators could possibly need the dash to come out. We're going to try to do it without pulling the dash. I think we can do it because I did it on mine. But can you imagine the getting a list like this? It's very, very expensive fast. So before we dive into values and talking about all and take a look at everything, let's go ahead and jump into the interior. Okay, ladies and gents, that black abyss up there, that is where the gauge is and the dash, that cluster is. And sorry, I can get the light in there a little bit to illuminate it, but since everything is disconnected, batteries disconnected, the engine's all apart, we can't turn it on. But from what we can see, it does look nice. But as I move back, it does become quite the black abyss. As we move up, 
the dash looks in really nice shape looking good up there looks like we have some wood trim above that glove box which is open for well you'll see in a second and here we have a very small infotainment screen and gobs and gobs and gobs and gobs of buttons and buttons and more buttons but nonetheless um there are lots of things to choose from there but if you do notice in our lower left hand corner you'll see that there is the selector for your two wheel and four wheel drive range Another interesting thing that dates this is we have a lovely slot for your compact flash uh, card because you have so many of those still. Um, yeah, nice addition. This is what happens when they add technology to cars. Sometimes they get out of date. We do have an analog clock there. It does appear to be working, doing keeping track of time, and two ports that you can charge. Also a nice little aux port. It does have dual controls. If we can see in there for our seats and our heated steering wheel. Little hidey hole. That is not, uh oh, uh oh, I can't get it to open. So whatever's caught in there will stay secret forever and ever. No looking in that cup holder. But again, here we have our gear selector as well. As we move over, we do have a neat little hidey hole with a few screws and bolts and whatnot in there. Of course, there's the key as well. We open up our center console. Ah, the DVD player. Again, more technology that is definitely looming towards the we won't need it much longer. But there it is. We'll see the, the package it goes with in just a second. As we look at our seats, they are leather with a nice little armrest here. And we have stitching in the center that does say infinity. On our door card, you'll see that we have more leather with wood trim and the controls to the windows sticking out. Yeah, they're not working and it's not working on the driver's side as well. This is quite the beast for hauling the family around because if we look at our back seat, we've got a second row, which has a really large uh, section there for cup holders, nice armrest to hold who knows what in there, and a third row as well. So lots of places that you can haul the family in here. We move up, headliner's in really good shape. Got lots of controls up there for our rear HVAC system, some lighting systems. And again, if we were to pull that down, there is our screen for the DVD player. So that's kind of a handy spot to make sure you're keeping the kids in a good climate as well, not to hear too much whining and complaining from back there. One thing that is interesting is they do have just one sunglasses holder opposed to the four that were in the Sequoia. Still find that rather odd, but again, nice little spot and that latch is working lovely. Here we are. Yes, and there is something going on with the steering wheel. We're not going to take that off, and maybe there's nothing going on. Maybe they just like the feel of this kind of leather grip on there. It does have a nice stick to it, so you're not slipping and sliding, and maybe the leather underneath was awfully slippery. Who knows? We're not going to know. That'll be the secret that the owner gets to keep with them. Have some simple controls, and interesting that they are toggles and big buttons, opposed to some cars that have rather small buttons and not little toggle switches up and down. So that's kind of interesting. Lovely infinity symbol in the center. So enough of this interior tuck. Let's get this baby up in the air. So here we are on the underneath of this QX56. We'll go ahead and take a look at it real quick. We can see our radiator, core support, everything plastic but everything is nice and dry there. You can see some of the oil that was leaking from those cam actuator plates. We'll have to clean that up before it goes, but we got those resealed already. We just need to clean the area up here. We'll go to this wheel. And brakes are about half gone, but they're good. CV boots are good. Sway bar links are good. Nothing loose. One thing we did, we had vibrations at 70 miles an hour and we actually put this in four wheel drive and let the wheel spin. And we could see the tires would move in and out a little bit. There's kind of a flat spot or a defect going on. So they're fairly new. We'll let them take care of warranty on that and see if they can help him out. You can see more oil and things that were leaking from the valve covers up above, all over the differential there. We'll go to this wheel. Brakes are good, boots are good, 
So here we can see the steering rack. We actually removed the boot because it was all wet in here. And you can see power steering fluid is dripping and coming out of the rack right there on the seals. And it's just pouring down right here. Sway bar link is good. Nothing loose there. That's all good. On our differential, the pinion seal here is leaking around the outside of it. You can see it needs to be replaced. We've got a new one here ready to go on. So here's our drive shaft. It's in good shape. Everything's good there. Exhaust looks good. Come back to our transfer case here. We will be servicing it, but it's all good to go. It's not leaking or anything. This drive shaft is good. Here's our fuel tank. Nothing's wet there. So we see that there's the flange here and the bolts are missing and then there's clamps. On mine, this was rusted out pretty bad. I had to redo it. I don't know what they've got there. It looks like it's working, so I'll just leave it alone. Here's our differential. All the seals on it are good. We'll check this wheel. CV boot is good. Good. Brakes are good. That one is good on the hub. These would have had an air suspension in the back, but it looks like it's been converted. It has a coil spring and a shock right there. You can see it's been changed over. Check our spare, which is good. I'm seeing these X's on the tires. The front wheel was that way too. If you guys scroll back, you'll see that it has painting, like maybe there's defects in that area or somebody noticed something there. I'm not sure. Here's our air compressor, which has been disabled and no longer has air suspension in the back. This is more of the problems I've talked about on these where parts are hard to get or non-existent anymore. Here's our ride height sensor. It's not connected. Let's check this wheel here. The brakes look good. CV boots are good. Listen to that, guys. I'm going to wiggle the wheel. You can hear the wheel bearing. We definitely got one of those on order as well. That wheel bearing is on its way out. It's Actually, it's already failed. It's loose. So I don't need to check the date code on the tires. There's going to be some warranty work or something going on with that, so I'm not even going to mess with the tires. And any of the rust that you've seen is all just surface rust. There's nothing to worry about. So let's go ahead and get this thing on the ground. So Mrs. Wizard noticed the windows were up on this vehicle because they don't work. Thought it was kind of odd, but we do have a rule in the shop. It's a rule that carries over from years ago when I worked at a shop and the owner made a demand Every vehicle that comes in the shop, the windows go down. We had a bad year of mechanics leaving keys and somehow, whether the BCM or something, they get locked and the keys would get locked in. After calling about the seventh locksmith out to get our keys out of the customer's vehicle, the boss said, no more. If a car comes in here, I don't care what level of car it is, the windows go down and if the customer doesn't like it, they don't have to come here. So that's what we do and it saves a lot of trouble. We did get this one down. It did work enough to get that one down so we can get into the car if we have to. And trust me guys, it saves for us from having to pry your door halfway open to get in and get it unlocked or call a locksmith out. It saves a lot of trouble. Now, none of these windows work except for this one. And it's not a fuse or a power issue or anything like that. It's this master switch. It controls power to all four windows, and it is dead. It was also dead on mine. It might be very likely dead on yours. It is a very common failure on the QX56. We also tested the passenger side switch. That even if we get the master one replaced, will that one work? And no, the answer is no. These two in the back will. We kind of cheated or whatever and placed power there. But that's a very common issue. So those are dead. You cannot buy new ones anymore. There is a place on eBay that rebuilds them or sells rebuilt ones, or you can get a good used one. That is your two options. There are no more new ones. How is that possible, Wizard? They don't make parts anymore? I found that out. I was shocked. With the QX56 I had, I constantly ran into part no longer available. They didn't make these for very long. I, th I don't remember the last year, 10, 9, 10, I don't remember. I don't know. You guys could look it up and see, but they stopped making them at that point. They didn't sell very well, and they're just, there was so low demand. A lot of parts on this vehicle are 
just non-existent brand new anymore. So keep that in mind if you're looking at one of these. There's a lot of things that aren't, there's no new parts. It's all used parts or you're screwed. So the question is, is it worth fixing this? Three, four, five thousand, whatever the bill is going to end up being on this thing. I don't know exactly yet, but it's going to be in that range. Is it worth it? And with this particular vehicle, it's right on the fence, it's right on the borderline. It almost isn't. You say, well, you can go buy another one of these QX56s now for five or six grand. They're in good shape, but they're not going to be in good shape. You spend the money to buy another one, and it's going to have probably ha at least half of all the problems I just listed as well, and you're going to sink another couple grand into it. So if you like these vehicles, you really want to keep your QX56 up to about three, four, five in that range, it is worth fixing it. But if you get something where it's going to be eight or ten grand, no, it's not worth fixing on these vehicles. You literally can go buy another one for that. But we are right up to, like I said, we're right on the teetering on the fence. I decided it was really, it, at this point, it is worth fixing because it is a nice vehicle. It runs good. It drives good. We'll get everything handled and they can drive it for that much longer. So if they're taking their family and their boat and their camper to the lake or doing things like that, this is definitely a tow rig. It can tow way more than a Tahoe of a similar year or an expedition or something like that. So it is very, very good at towing. So if you're curious what kind of tools that Magic Mike's going to use or that we use here in the shop, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. Make sure to hit the subscribe button because we are packed full of cars this week and next week. We're up to our eyeballs in work, which means lots of great videos for you guys. Thanks for watching.